Welcome to the fourth tutorial of Elliott AI framework for Unity. Today, we are going to create a huge fire-breathing dragon, which skeletons will try to kill for loot. For this tutorial, we will use an animated model of dragon, which uses Unity Mechanum to control the animations. Let's take a look at an animator controller that will be used for animating our agent's graphics. As you can see, the animator variable that is used for a transition between idling, walking and running is called speed. This variable is going to help Elliot control the animator controller automatically. All the other actions use triggers for the transitions and we just need to specify the name of any of those variables to trigger them with the skills. We are going to create a dragon ragdoll. Let's start with configuring its animator controller. We already have one named dragon at ragdoll. It is configured so that it plays animation of death by default. We just need to select die node and assign proper animation clip to it in the inspector if it is not configured like that by default. Now we just need to drag and drop that ragdoll game object into the project window to save it as a prefab for later. Time to create an agent using unit factory and use one of the dragon prefabs as this agent's graphics and the ragdoll prefab we just created as the agent's ragdoll. Since we want our dragon to be bigger than skeletons, we need to adjust the scale of the agent so that it fits the size of its graphics. There is an important thing to mention here. Agent's perception casts rays that collide with colliders. Agents, created with unit factory come along with capsule colliders attached to them. When agents are different sizes, their colliders might be at different altitudes, which might prevent them from seeing each other. To make sure it's not the case in your project, simply adjust the height of colliders on your agents so that they are around the height of your agents themselves. As you can see, if we put a skeleton right next to the dragon, we can see that the dragon's look and shoot positions are above the skeleton, which would prevent dragon from seeing and attacking skeletons. We can fix it by simply dragging the dragon's look transform down so that it would have no problem casting rays straight onto the skeleton. We are going to use shoot as an origin for the dragon's fire, so let's put it near the dragon's mouth and also make it a child of dragon's head, so that the shoot follows dragon's animation. Do not forget to configure the agent's animation component by setting animation mode to mechanum and assigning the graphics game object as the reference to the animator controller. Great. Now we are ready to do the next step. We are going to make the dragon protective. He will not try to go and look for trouble. He is going to simply stay where he is, from the beginning of the level and try to counterattack any harassment done to him. In order to not get overwhelmed with the attacks, dragon needs a way to kick his opponents back. Also, since it is a dragon, we'll make sure he can breathe fire, attacking his opponents at a distance. The first skill we are going to make is going to be the one that lets dragon keep some distance between it and its opponents, however the order in which skills are created is not important at all. Create a new skill anywhere in the project. Let the name of this skill be Dragon Claws. The purpose of this skill is to push opponents away from the dragon. We'll make it so that it affects all enemies in a certain radius. In order to do that, we should initialize skill by radius. Since this skill should affect only those enemies, which are close to the dragon, a radius of 3 should work fine. Load time and cool down with the value of 0.5 work just fine with the animations we have. The only option in economy group of settings, that plays a critical role for this skill, is the push power. It should have a large enough value to free some space for the dragon. In order to make Dragon play a corresponding animation, we should look at the way our animator controller is set up. Here we can see that the animation that is of interest for us is the one that is called Claw Attack. This animation is invoked by a trigger that is called Claw Attack. So we set our loading message in skill configuration to the name of that trigger. Since there is no distinction between loading skill and executing it in the animator controller, we can leave executing message field blank. The second skill is going to let the dragon attack his opponents at a distance. As you should have already guessed, it is time to create a new skill in the project and name it. Let's call it Dragon Fire. This skill is going to be invoked by a projectile. In fact, to create something similar to a fire channeling, this skill is going to shoot many projectiles during short period of time. We already have a prefab for that and it is named Dragonfire. 
It has a projectile component attached and fire particle system as a child, to create the effect of a fire trail. Set that dragonfire prefab as a projectile prefab in the skills settings. This is a range attack, so range of 10 should be just fine. Here is one of interesting parts of the skill settings. Take a look at invocation duration and invocation ping. The values of these variables that you can see here mean that agent will invoke the skill, create new projectile in this case, every 0.1 seconds for 1.2 seconds after waiting for 0.6 seconds for skill to load. Now, sure enough, we want the fire to deal some damage to the target. The animator trigger parameter that invokes an animation that we want is called fly flame attack. And here goes the second interesting thing about this skill. We can put targets on fire and deal damage to them over time after they got into a contact with the dragon's breath. To do that we should create another skill that will be applied right after the main dragon fire takes its effect. So, create a new skill and name it, for example, dragon fire dot. We do not need to cast any rays, as we already know the target of the skill, so skill can be initialized directly. It is going to be invoked by target itself, so we do not even need to configure its range. To make it affect its target over time, we need to configure the effect duration and the effect ping. In this case the skill will take its effect every one second for three seconds. Of course, we want this dot to damage its target. In order to create an effect of a target being on fire, we can set a prefab that represents special effects of fire as a value of on apply fx on target field. Alright, our helper skill is ready and we can add it to the list of additional effects of our main dragon fire skill. Of course, we do not forget to add newly created skills that will be used by our dragon to his skills list. In this particular case we need a rather simple behavior. We just want our dragon to idle when nothing bothers him, push opponents away with dragon claws when they are too close and attack them with the dragon fire when they are within the skills range. Sure enough, we don't forget to set this behavior to the corresponding agent's field. We can easily justify killing an animal, like dragon, by putting some loot inside it. In this case, we'll use coins that skeletons will be able to collect if they succeed in defeating the beast. We want to go to dragon's inventory settings and make sure that the init from children toggle is checked. This will allow us to put some coins in its inventory by simply making them children of inventory game object. First of all, we should have those coins ready. In our prefabs folder you should be able to find a prefab called coin. Let's take a closer look at it. In the coins inspector we can see that it has a unit component attached, which helps agents identify the object as an item. We are going to change its item type to block, because we already have a method in the Elliot standard library to check if an agent can see a block. We are also able to see that there is an item component attached to the coin. All of its fields are left untouched, except from its item type, because we do not need to use any of its functionality right now. To put a coin into Dragon's inventory, simply drag and drop the coin prefab somewhere on the scene and make it a child of the game object, named Inventory, which you can find among Dragon's children in the hierarchy window. A dragon with a single coin is not a very good justification for a murder, so clone those coins until you feel like skeletons have a serious reason to mess around with the dragon. We also want to make a few changes in the skeleton's behavior to make it pick up coins when the agent can see one. One more step needs to be done before we can admire what we have accomplished here. Take those skeletons that we created in the previous tutorials and put them somewhere near the dragon. Make sure that skeletons are all in one team and the dragon in a different one. 